Hi, and welcome to What You Need to Know About Open Metrics. Let's start with who we are. I'm Brian Brazel, the founder of Robust Perception, uh, one of the developers of Prometheus, and of course, one of the people working on open metrics. And the author of the Prometheus uh, Bible, Prometheus Up and Running. And I'm Richie. I'm the community director at Grafana Labs, also Prometheus team member, the chair of the uh, SIG Observability within CNCF, and the founder of Open Metrics. And we couldn't really be talking about Open Metrics without also talking about Prometheus. So let's look at Prometheus for a minute. Before Prometheus, historically, the closest we had, which, which resembled a common standard within the space of, of monitoring, was SNMP. And many of the old solutions are based on what is today ancient te technology, like for example, ASN1, which is, which is front and center in SNMP. And while this has, it's, it's a great piece of engineering, but it's, it's not matching the design and engineering traders of today. Many of those protocols are chatty and slow. They tend to be, or they can often be proprietary, hard to implement, or even both. And many of the underlying data models, for example, SNMP, also Modbus, also others, tend to encourage vendor-specific variations, which follow the letter of the law, but not the spirit. And one thing which is my, my, one of my largest pet peeves, hierarchical data models. Of course, they almost never fit your need. If you have a thing where you have, I don't know, region, customer, deployment, but now you need to look at your data by customer or per deployment. And this hierarchical data model is basically, it's broken as soon as you're done defining it. So let's look at the world after Prometheus. Prometheus, as of today, is the de facto standard in cloud-native metric monitoring and way beyond. And by extension, the same is true for the Prometheus exposition format. The ease of exporting this data has led to an explosion in compatible metric endpoints. And we have thousands and thousands of access borders and integrations, which people wrote on their own for their own stuff, just because they wanted to get their stuff into Prometheus, because it was so simple and so powerful. We also have standard exporters and we have libraries which make integrating easy. And we even going beyond this by creating a, a standard set of basically a scaffold where which you can use to write your own exporters and not focus on writing HTTP endpoints and making that stuff work, but actually focus on what you want to expose about your own stuff. And of course, label sets allow you to bring up this n-dimensional matrix of, of how you look at your data. And if you need to slice and dice according to by customer, by deployment, by region, by version of a thing, it doesn't matter. You can always access your data precisely as you need it, as long as you have the labels for it. There's always tons of politics in, in, any, in any open standard. And to be honest, Quite a few vendors and projects have been torn about adopting something which, which carries the Prometheus name. And especially the more traditional vendors, like especially in the networking space, which is many moons ago where I'm coming from, they want to have an official standard, whatever that means. But obviously we wanted to reuse the installed base of Prometheus. Of course, A, for the ease of adoption, and B, for the sheer installed uh, base, um, but also, we want to still reject that kitchen sink approach, which some standards have, where they try to cover all use spaces. We want to follow the Unix mantra of doing one thing well. So we really remained focused and also, to be honest, quite opinionated about how to use things just because of, of a lot of experience, if I do say so myself, in, in how to run uh, monitoring and observability. And many, many different companies have collaborated within open metrics and helped shape this. So I, I dare say we actually achieved a neutral standard. We have a ton of commitments and this list is partial um, of people who, who actually are of companies who want to adopt uh, open metrics, but we also have a lot of people or a few people behind this. The marathon runners who have been at this for quite, a, quite some years now, are Ben Koji of GitLab, Brian, who's in this talk, myself, Rob Skelton, formerly uh, M3DB, now Chronosphere, and honorable mention for someone who dropped relatively recently, but did a ton of useful work and gave a ton of useful in, uh, input within, within Open Metrics. That's so weird. We mainly work by consensus in Fortnite because, um, so we, we tend to not have overrides or anything, but we tend to have very long discussions about all the details. And we had quite a few attendees from many different companies over time. So over to you, Brian. Yeah. So in terms of the actual open metric standards itself, 
The good news is that it is largely the same as Prometheus format. There's been a few cleanups, you know, warts removed, and a small few new features. As uh, Richard said, we're trying to avoid the second syndrome or kitchen sink effect and try and keep things small, and any additions are small still. Uh, so, so far, like it's quite possible if you are using the Python client, the official Prometheus Python client, that you've already been using open metrics for a year and a half because, well, the reference implementation is there. And the general plan is that beyond the Python client, that the other clients at some point will transparently migrate you to open metrics without you noticing. The general idea being that, in theory, everything will just work. There are, however, breaking changes which are likely to affect you. The big one is that the convention for counters to end in underscore total is now mandatory. So if you are already following that convention, it will be a seamless change. If it isn't, then when your client library switch, your metrics name are going to change. So this is something to get ahead of if you can. So for example, if you had a metric called CPU seconds, it would end up being called inside Prometheus CPU seconds total once it migrated through. The other thing is the time second stamps are now in seconds for consistency because we use seconds everywhere in Prometheus. But historically, Prometheus format uses milliseconds for the actual timestamps. Um, so we just changed that for consistency. But the thing is that extremely there's a very few good use cases for exposing timestamps directly. So this is unlikely to actually affect anyone, or at least not too many people. So I wouldn't worry about this. It's the total on the counters that's the big thing you need to think about. There's also a whole pile of other things, like there was two different types of escaping. There's now only one. There's a ways to take it and these scrapes. There's uh, higher resolution timestamps. That was something that was asked for, for example, talking of collaboration with other companies. That was a request from Influx Data. Uh, it's got 64-bit integers. Uh, units are now in there in first class. Uh, created is something, a request coming from Google and Stackdriver. Uh, which handles some corner cases. Um, now, Prometheus is pull, but there's also considerations in there for push as well to make sure it works for everyone. And the text format is still there. Historically, Prometheus also had a proto format that just went by the wayside, basically, with Prometheus 2, but has reintroduced really open metrics as an optional thing. So what's new? It's probably one of the big features is exemplars because as metrics are just one part of your monitoring solution, you're also going to have logs and traces. And the idea with exemplars is you can say, hey, I had just had this request that took a second in this particular histogram. Can I go and find out in my tracing system? So here we're saying, hey, DEF, that particular trace ID, took 290 milliseconds, and you can go find that. Um, this is already supported directly in Cortex and Thanos. And will likely be supported in Prometheus itself at some point as well to access this data. So the current status in terms of the Prometheus project, uh, as I've mentioned, the Prometheus client, Python client is the reference implementation for open metrics and uses the open metrics data model internally. Uh, Go so far has just limited support because uh, Go wanted to support, at least the Go client wanted to support exemplars. Um, Prometheus has, since version 2.5, will negotiate open metrics preferentially. Um, and info and enum are now first class features. These are conventions that came up over the years as different ways to represent basically strings. And you can use these. And the handy thing with all this stuff is that all the grades gracefully. So even if you're using, say, info and enum, and you end up not negotiating open metrics, you'll still get them looking like gauges as they would with Prometheus today. So it's all nice and transparent as far as we can make it. Now, of course, we want to be an open standard. So other companies are also ingesting it. Uh, so today, I think pretty much all the main metrics monitoring vendors, both commercial and non-commercial, support the Prometheus text format. There's already companies as well, like Datadog, for example, is able to ingest open metrics. And in fact, they also contribute uh, quite a few performance improvements to the official reference parser. Um, in addition, uh, OpenTelemetry is planning to support open metrics as a first class wire format. And indeed, um, some of the discussions we've had within open metrics and Prometheus generally are helping to uh, shape OpenTelemetry via our experience. Uh, just one thing to watch out for because 
you know, open metrics has been the word's been around for a while now. If someone says open metrics, there's a good chance they actually mean the Prometheus text format. And um, so there is some confusion there, unfortunately. But here's a simple way to help spot it. As I mentioned, the total counter change is the main thing. So here, the first example, you'll see there's an underscore total in the type line and also on the actual um, time series. Whereas in open metrics, you'll see it has a unit, which the Prometheus doesn't format. And there's an uh, underscore total is not present. There's also an example of an underscore created. And there's also that hash EOF at the end. So we know that the exposition wasn't just interrupted mid-transfer. And as you can see, we since 2018, you were actually already able to speak open metrics and it already happened automatically in the background. But standardizing stuff is hard. So sometimes the implementation is a lot further than the standard. So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, the text format and the protobuf specs are done. Obviously, of course, else we, we couldn't have implemented those or Brian couldn't have implemented those in the, um, in the Python library. The long form prose version is done um, and it's currently being virtual with and compressed, but there's, there's uh, the saying within ITF that something isn't done when you can't add anything anymore, but when you can't take anything away anymore. And I think that's also an old Chinese saying. So we started with roughly 52 pages uh, of just pure spec. Eight pages of those or 16 pages of those have already been compressed down to roughly half of this. And we have 36 pages to go to also just compress more and more because else, uh, yeah, it wouldn't go through ITF anyway if, if, if we didn't compress it like a lot. Um, we do have a, a test suite, which is ready to use. Um, it's based on the Python client library and you can already use this for compliance testing to get ready for, for when this actually hits the road or hits the, the dirt or whatever, you know what I mean. What are the next steps? Um, completing this internet draft, actually submit it to the RFC uh, process within hopefully the ops WG uh, within ITF. Um, we already established uh, established contact. There is good or there's active interest in adoption by that WG. Call out to Warren Komari, who, who has been helping on, on the end of ITF. Um, obviously, we will support open metrics in all the official uh, client libraries. We have uh, exemplar support still to go into mainline Prometheus. It's already in the branch. And downstream projects like, for example, M3DB or Chronosphere, uh, Grafana, Loki, and such um, also should use ma uh, make use of all this new metadata. So how can you transition to open metrics? Well, again, for the counters, the underscore total thing is, is important. And if you add this now, and if you do it properly now, uh, you actually control when you make that change. So we highly suggest you do this. And just for the record, all the client library integrations, they'll handle this automatically. So even if you call your counter underscore total, it will not be called underscore total, underscore total, that will all happen for you. Um, anyone who's, who's currently uh, emitting data as in being scraped, ensure that you set the correct content type. So a Prometheus can see if this is actually uh, open metrics or the Prometheus exposition format 004. And for anyone who is writing um, scrapers or ingesters, please uh, set your headers accordingly so you can uh, negotiate either Prometheus or uh, open metrics as you need. Thanks a lot. And now we are open for questions.